Yeah. Yeah. There you go, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. Watch your new tip. New tip. <laughs> Well, how's it going, guys? Uh, Evan from Hosteed. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about short-term rental management, uh, some things to look out for. I'm going to be giving some case studies, um, some operational tips. So hopefully it's going to be some good information for you guys to take with you. Uh, if you're looking to looking to rent a short-term rental, looking to buy one, um, hopefully you can take this information and use it to help you do that. So. So me and Philip actually started this business um, in 2017. Uh, so we we were actually prior Air Force. Um, we didn't really have any experience in the Airbnb market or anything like that. We had a lot of IT experience. We're both, I'm a programmer and he's an IT guy. Um, so we didn't have a ton of experience going in, but we bought a house in the Springs and started renting out and uh, noticed there weren't any property managers in, in the Springs. So, uh, that's when we decided, you know, there's a need in the market here, so we started Hosty uh, because of that reason. So over the last two and a half years, we've grown that to over 80 short-term rentals uh, of a staff of around 30 employees, and uh, we've hosted a, around 10,000 guests at this wow. point. Nice. Nice. Uh, so we manage a range of rentals. So this is one actually right down the road by 291 Whiskey. It's a one-bedroom studio. Um, up to five bedroom luxury homes, and uh, even on up to seven bedroom luxury, I call it almost a mansion. Um, but yeah, we, we manage a range of houses, so two to three bedrooms, four bedrooms, a range of different types of homes. Um, two problems we wanted to solve, we wanted to provide easy turnkey solutions to our owners. Um, not only that, but to earn you a good return on your investment um, to the other options that are in the market right now. So that's one thing we focused on and to provide amazing guest experiences. And I can vouch for interior design. It's so important, super important. Um, you know, that guest experience when they're coming in the home, um, those reviews, those reviews, exponential growth. You know, let's say 500 people see that review. You know, how many people are gonna, are gonna book the place because of that review at this point? Um, so it's super important to have great reviews. Um, that goes back to interior design. It's, it's the functionality and it's the uh, design of the home that makes it a great experience. So. Thank you for that plug. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk about short-term versus long-term renting. And so I'm not, I'm not saying like anyone's bad or anyone's good. Like short-term and long-term renting, they, they work good in certain situations. So it's it depends on the home, basically. So um, this is what I've seen. So with short-term rentals, asset preservation. So actually, like when a guest is staying here, well, they're not usually staying here. They're out seeing the spring, so they're not spending a whole lot of time in the home. Uh, for one, and then two, uh, the home's getting cleaned two to three times a week. It's getting maintained. We have to maintain it as property managers to a high degree to have that guest experience. So um, I would say over five years, over ten years, your assets can be better preserved going to depreciate less. Um, higher earning potential. So this is the, this is the big one. This is the one. This is the reason why everyone's you know looking at short term rentals. It's the the higher return on investment. That's that's the big one here. Um, the flexibility. So we actually have a lot of owners that when they rent through us, they use their property. Um, they come and stay on vacation. They come and stay for a month uh, with their family and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, you have a lot of flexibility with short-term renting. You don't have a long-term tenant staying in there where you can't go inside that home. Um, but it is time time consuming. Um, it's it's difficult to manage. <laughs> it's difficult to manage. Um, you know, there's a lot of logistical pieces, a lot of moving parts. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're thinking about self-managing. It's very very complex. Um, I think the statistic was nine to twenty hours a week was spent on managing a SDR by yourself if um, that's something you're looking at doing. So, you know, if you have a full-time job, if you have a lot of things going on in your life, just, you know, keep in mind it is very time-consuming to manage a short-term rental, if you want to do it to a high degree. Um, so long-term, uh, I put in there potential for improper property care, and the only reason I put that is uh, you don't have eyes on your property all the time. So is that long-term tenant actually going to tell you if there's a leak, a small leak happening, Let's say you know from a water heater or something. Are they going to notice that? Is it going to take three months for them to notice that? And then at that three months, is there going to be significant property damage, where you know now you're going to have to fork up that money to uh, pay for that property damage? So just one thing to keep in mind. 
uh, lower earning potential, uh, you know, you're most likely, not all the time, so you may actually earn more in a long-term rental, just depends on the location. Uh, but what we've consistently seen is there is a lower earning potential uh, in terms of the revenue you're going to earn. Uh, less flexibility, I've already kind of went over that, and then, but it is less time consuming, so it's a lot easier if you don't have a manager to, to manage that, that investment. So I'm going to do a case study. Hopefully this will be pretty interesting for you guys. So I'm actually going to go through the numbers of a long-term rental versus a short-term rental. What is this property going to earn? Or actually, what is what did this property actually earn over the last year with us versus what a what it would have rented long-term? You should have layers of protection back against that. So what we do is we take a damage deposit. Um, we have insurance that's specific to short-term rental. So if any if anything happens with the property, and that's part covered. of the fee. Is that part of the fee? No, that's so that's this number right here, this uh, insurance number. That's why this number right here is a little higher, because the <coughs> insurance company is actually going to charge a little bit more, usually, to uh, to insure short term rental. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, it's usually uh, one point two five percent more, one point five fifty percent more, twenty five percent more. Um, yeah, just something to keep in mind. I would definitely get short term rental insurance if you if you don't already have it or. If you're buying a short-term rental, definitely get um, short-term rental insurance because you won't be protected if, say, the, the house burns down or um, an act of God happens. If you don't have short-term rental insurance, you're, you might not be protected because most most uh, insurance providers have, have a business exclusion clause where they actually say you can't run a short-term rental um, with a regular homeowner's policy. So just keep that in mind when you're going short-term rent. Um, does anyone have any questions on these numbers? Do you find that after someone does short term rental for a while, they go to the door and put in a view and get out of it? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, this so is a good idea. We'll buy the it. only time we've ever seen that is someone has a very emotion, very big emotional attachment to the home. And they've lived there maybe for like 10 to 20 years and they just don't feel comfortable with having strangers in their home. So that's really the only time we've ever ever seen somebody not want to do it after doing it. Um, yeah. Oh, that's your question. So I just so just to understand, so you actually help folks that like if I said I just want to get this, I'm gonna I'm gonna put all the money down, but you're gonna help me out. Is that in terms of So you're the manager? Yeah, we do yeah, yeah, we do the management. So, so do you help with this type of thing though? Yeah. Help, especially <clears throat> newbies walk through exactly, it all yeah. and like you gave the great you know information of you really should have the short term rental insurance for Yep. And and then so <coughs> that being said then, do you deal with like I know some neighborhoods, um, you know, you have people that wanna do this, but the neighborhoods fight back on it. Right. And HOAs, also, yes, yeah, HOAs covenants. And, um, but then also too all the new laws and stuff that are happening, um that yeah. I've been hearing mm -hmm. about all, you know, just so many yep. different things coming up with taxes and that they've really been almost discouraging, yet this is such a huge market for BRBO and Right, right. And, so what would be your recommendation on? On how to navigate, let's mm -hmm. say, the regulation yep. and the laws. Um, I'm, I have a slide on that. So oh, so slow. Yeah, no, no worries, no worries. I'm wrapping up. But I, I can, uh, <laughs> okay. well, we'll I can, yeah, I can go over there. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. But that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> can you guys gauge um, occupancy rates based, based on the area? Yeah, absolutely. Is there a um, program you're using to help do that? Or? Well, we, we have a lot of internal that data, um, so we, we Obviously, we have 80 homes. We have them in all different types of neighborhoods. Um, so we actually run the data. You know, if someone's coming to us, hey, how will this home do the short-term rental? We're actually going to run that against our database. And what, you know, what is the income going to look like? What are the expenses going to look like? You know, here's hopefully we can get a gauge on the ROI over how many every years you want to keep it. Um, so yeah, and then we are using outside data as well. Yeah. yeah question. Oh, sorry. John. Well. The terms in this market, the huge market, have been used a lot today and lots of other days. Like, yeah. But the market is cyclic. So how do you prepare your owners and how do you prepare personally when the market cycles turn against this being full every single day or every Like a recession or something like that. Yeah, if the, mar when yeah. the market turns and becomes a, 
a different market? How do you prepare for that? Um, so we're actually, we're going to do a hybrid model. Um, what we're doing is during our slow season, we're going to rent long term. We're going to rent as a uh, corporate rental. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of corporate rental. Uh, so during the slow season, re renting as a corporate rental, that's going to bring that overall monthly average up. Um, but I think it, it's just, you know, making sure if, if a recession does happen, you do have the funds or the capital to make it through that recession uh, would be a good thing to do. Um, well, my thought is uh, about the corporate part. That's yeah. a great idea. Right. Because corporate is not going to change as much as vacation. Yeah, yeah. So there will always be corporate rentals. That's something that you could use to stem off a recession in a way? Absolutely, yeah. Well, I think so just hedging your bet a little bit for our This owner. is a military town, you know, as yeah. you know. I mean, you mm -hmm. always have people coming in, especially with the space That's program true. now coming. Yeah. You're going to have those people that are looking for short-term rentals, yeah. but maybe they're not coming out here to move their family. They're just coming out for a three or six month, month you know, to be right. type thing. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah. even with a recession, there's going to be people traveling. Um, you might take, there's, I'm not saying you're not going to see any type of hit to your income. Um, the hope is maybe you can break even through a recession, which is still great for return on investment uh, on a property. Excellent. So, so, but it's not up to these guys to determine that. It's up to you as an owner. Maybe. Yeah, like disclaimer: yeah. we don't make yeah. any promises or any uh, <laughs> any guarantees. So, back here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Do your numbers ever include depreciation when you're running on that uh, scenario? Your case study. Depreciation. depreciation. Yeah, so I did the uh, depreciation at 100000 yeah, I can't see it from the back. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> did you want to know those specific numbers? No, that's okay. Okay. And second question would be is what are you tracking for your clients as far as expenses and what kind of reports are you providing them? So we're, we're tracking the management fee side, any type of maintenance. So we're, we're doing all the maintenance work. Um, any type of let's, just expenses for the property. We're going to track that side of it. We're not going to track the mortgage. We're not going to track your utility bill. You're going to pay all that separately. Um, so that's where you would come in as an accountant to help them out with the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're very helpful because if we have succinct reports, it makes it much easier for your investors Absolutely. and my clients. Yep. Yeah. It will say, If you have a management person taking care of a regular rental, if you're doing this long-term and short-term rental, what part of that do you do? Do you send people in to make the bed and clean up? Or yeah, we, we do full, maintenance yep, full turnkey management. So huh. anything to do with the short-term rental, we have a lot of people that are out of the country, out of the state, they don't have anything to do with it. They just receive a monthly report uh, with a, a payout <coughs> at the end of the month. So, um, but we do, we like to work with our owners. So if an owner wants to have more heavy involvement in their home. Um, Does that adjust your price then? Uh, not usually. Uh, it really depends. <coughs> so. so you have a standard pricing? Yep. Absolutely. Twenty two percent is our normal price and then uh, that's for a year and then twenty five percent is for six months or less. So that's the management fee on top of that heavy rate. Yeah. And uh, do you find people I know some of the Airbnb companies in the world, they the people they take the money. Yeah. And yeah. Is we, that what you do also? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. You're more local than as opposed to. Yeah. So that's, you know, one big thing is like we're here, we have 30 employees here in town. We can respond to an issue in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can handle everything locally, which is huge in terms okay. of management. It's such a logistically complex business. Okay. Um, it's important to have somebody local doing it. Okay. I'd like to make one statement. At one point when we started buying houses, started having a fit because what happens if the military leaves? I said, I don't think the mountains are going to leave. I don't think the sun is going to leave. So yeah. we're still going to be good. I don't think the military is going to leave either. No, they, no, they, no they, I'm just yeah. saying they're coming in. Was, yeah, you know, was was yeah. concerned about that because we were from Illinois and ran to a left right. the whole time. Fell apart. Absolutely. Mm. So, cool. like I said, I think we still have the mountains in the center. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on your slide with the expenses, um, did, I couldn't see it. Did, did you have uh, the cost of the property management in there? Yeah. So for the for the year. Yeah. It, it, so that's at twenty percent. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, and then I'm going to post this online if anybody wants to look at the slides afterwards. Oh, cool. If you guys want to follow us on Facebook, you can take a look at that. And this video uh, also be on there too. If you want to. Yeah. Um, yeah.
Cool. Does anybody have any other questions about outcome scenarios for this rental? They manage a property community and they are incredible. They do an amazing job. Stand up, Kristen. From the minute they come in, they get you all set up, they tell you what you need to do, they come in, they put automatic locks on the doors, they set up a coffee bar, they have <coughs> sanitized laundry, they have cleaning people, they have handyman people, they have people that come and will answer the phone at the middle of the night, we, we have a camera on the front, not inside, not creeps, but on the porch, <laughs> and we've seen their, them come and help guests that need something 9, 10 o'clock at night. They, they do a phenomenal job. They organize everything from beginning to end. And if you, you know, we do some of the stuff ourselves, not for a reduced fee, but to save ourselves expenses. So we, we have someone that does a lawn. He's 16 and has the same last name as me. So he goes <laughs> on the lawn. And, you know, we take care of the maintenance stuff and we do those kind of things. But there are things like we've been out of town and we haven't been able to handle it. And OC will get in touch with us and they'll take care of it. And uh, I work full time, my husband works full time, and we we wanted to do this, but we just did not have the nine to 20 hours a week to do it. And our return on investment using this company has been incredible. So, you know, if you're thinking about it, sit down and meet with them. They'll take the time to walk you through their process. Um, and I, I, hands down, they do just the best job in town. So, you know, give them a shot if, if you need to talk with someone about how doing that. I can't believe I've referred a ton of clients to them and they've all been just tremendous. And we have so many five-star reviews for our little place and they handle the getting reviews as well. So from setup to booking to reviews to follow-up, they do the whole process. So these guys are great. Thank you. 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 So to the lady's point that uh, uses you guys to, to get um, tenants for her property. So let's say I would go with you guys. I'm trying to understand the interaction. So I go buy a house, put, put money down on it, hire you guys, and then I pay you a monthly fee and then you, you know, I get a monthly return. Is that our only interaction? And I just, I don't want to do anything. Yeah, exactly. It's, right? It's automated if you want to do it. Okay. So. Cool. What's that? Is the check coming to him a lot less because you're doing so much? No, work? you're getting 80%, we're getting around 20%. Um, so you're getting significant because you're paying the mortgage, you're paying the utilities. Um, you're it's, getting, your, it's your asset yeah. getting leveraged. So. And we factor that into it when you, like, what is your return on investment? What is your return on investment with the manager? And then what is your. How much is your time worth? Are you going to be spending nine, 20 hours a week? Um, there's a lot of factors to consider. Yeah. So question then, do you help with regulating how much you charge them as well? Because I know like where I live, I live near Palmer Lake. And yeah. so it, we have a lot of people that love to come out for Air Force Academy graduation and parents weekend. And it's just like in Georgia where you're at Augusta, you have the masters, you 
coverage. And when you have these locations that have these big draw of people in, um, and you're talking a year out, big people are yeah. looking to fill places, and you can really, the prices go up quite a bit. Yep. So do you help with that? Yeah, to, so to help your clients that maybe don't know the military aspect yep. or where they could have higher prices versus lower or prices? seasonal aspects. Uh -huh. So yeah. we actually have an algorithm. Um, where we use it for price, the pricing algorithm, basically. Mm -hmm. And it basically fluctuates the price based on supply and demand in the market. Okay. Um, it also accounts for certain, you know, holidays, graduation weekend. Mm -hmm. It yes. accounts for all that and prices it out compared to what other properties are charging. So it's basically supply and demand, and it's right. uh, automated. And then we also have a financial team that's actually going in manually and uh, trying to find where we can get more return on investment mm -hmm. for certain dates. Um, so it's something that we have. That's one of our main jobs is that we heavily look at pricing. Help the yeah, yeah. We're that. trying to get so you the maximum return on your investment. In our neighborhood, how many people rent their places out and how much they get? Yeah. Okay. We have need to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why just, we're all here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just from Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> or do you do the mountains? Yeah, like, we're. What's your range? So we're uh, we're Woodland Park, Woodland Park Cascade, yeah. um, Manitou Springs. Manitou Springs. We're getting up to the Monument. We're going down to Pueblo. So I would say all the surrounding areas. Stops at Woodland Park. Not divide or it's it's all, it's all all that we could be having a So the seasonality piece of things, like can you talk about that really quick? What can we see, think, for seasonality? Yeah. What I'm thinking is maybe some of the uh, questions will be answered with the rest of the slide. Yeah, so I'm thinking so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One other question. Um, I know when I do income taxes this last year, everything, if you were under seven day rentals, then it was all a different way. If it was eight day rentals, it was different. Can you, can you say that you will rent something for eight days? I don't care if you stay there for one or two, but the rental is for the eight day period. Uh, yeah, you can set a minimum on night. Okay. So. I can. Yeah, yeah, okay. she, she's, she's a CPA, she's gonna be going over okay. that. Um, 